this is an episode of Jacob Lenhaus Tours America. My name's Tom, or Tuck, or Tucker. Most people call me by Tuck, my nickname. I'll be answering questions for Jacob Lenhaus' YouTube channel. So his first question to me is, where did you grow up? Well, basically, I grew up where I'm currently living now. Um, it's a small town community, Hudson, New York. It's a small city. I live about three or four miles just outside of the city limits, so I'm in the rural country area. I have um, farmland right all around me, the cornfields down the road, cattle across the way, uh, sheep just down the road, and I actually live on a dirt road. Um, not many of them left in America are there. Uh, I really enjoy this area. So it's farm, basically quiet, um, and you're not too far from everything. The city of Albany, um, which is the state capital of New York, is only like 30 miles to the north of us. So you really um, have everything you need pretty close. And if you like to go out and do even more things, um, city life, uh, New York City is 150 miles away. It's not a bad ride. You can take the train ride down, which is a nice ride um, to go visit there. But I really enjoy this area. However, I haven't always lived here. Um, I grew up most of my childhood here, and then I moved to Southwest Florida. I really enjoyed living there. Um, the beach, the ocean, and the great temperatures are definitely the plus for living there. I only came back because of family reasons. You know, I needed to be closer to my parents. You know, as they age in years, you want to be around. Um, for them. They've always been there for you, so you want to be there when it's their time of need. So I'm still here. I'm enjoying my time. And I'm enjoying now just my one parent. My father passed away. So, um, you know, I just enjoy seeing my mom. So that's the benefit of being here. Um, so what is my favorite time of the year season-wise and why? Um, really, they're all unique in their own way. For example, um, you've got winter where everything is, you know, when there's snow, there's ice, it's clean, crisp, smelling, um, beautiful scenery, bright. Um, and the cold, the cold is actually refreshing. It doesn't bother me. I, um, a lot of people really don't like the cold. Um, I feel you just kind of dress a little bit more for, but really doesn't even bother me that much. Um, it's just, you know, snowmobiling, skiing, ice fishing and stuff like that. I'm not really big on that so it's kind of a waste for me in that part of the year um i used to have a snowmobile and the few years that i've had it there was little or no snowstorms or my weekends off it was awful where you couldn't go so it was just kind of a waste to have even that kind of equipment um and i only skied a few times i really didn't enjoy it that much um but yeah just being out in the cool is uh it's kind of nice but it's not my favorite the fall is beautiful. You've got all these beautiful colors, the changing of the scene, you know, the mountainsides changing colors, all the leaves coming down, um, apple harvest, apple pies, apple cider donuts. Uh, that's something to look forward to in the fall. I really enjoy that part, but it's still not my favorite. Springtime, um, it's starting to get really nice out. You know, you start to see the flowers come up, the buds on the trees start to come out. Everything just starts to turn green. You get that really fresh start feeling of the year. Um, it's really refreshing to see. And then your daylight starts to get getting a little bit longer because in the wintertime you lose so much daylight. You can start doing a little bit more projects outside, um, cleaning up whatever from whatever happened from the winter time. And then um, we go into the summer which is my most favorite time of the year. Because of the days are the longest, you've got really nice temperatures for the most part. Um, where we live here, it's averages in the 70s, 80s in the summertime. We do hit 90s and 100s in those you know peaks when they have the heat um, wave stuff, but I really enjoy that. Um, I'm a summer person because I do a lot of stuff for the summer. I do most of my projects in the summertime. I take all my vacation in the summertime. Um, have a camp. Keep my RV in a campground all year. Um, it's only open May 1st to mid-October. So, um, you know, you want good weather for that. You have friends over on the weekend or whatever. 
sit by the fire and have some beer, some cocktails, get a little rowdy, play some music, um, whatever, talk trash of each other, <laughs> just all have a good time. Um, and my dog likes it too. We get out a lot more, more walks, and he enjoys the outside a lot too. Um, then there's summer games, you know, baseball, horseshoes, badminton, volleyball, barbecues. I mean, I, I love having barbecues and friends over and popping some tops and having a good time. But summertime is definitely the best. And swimming, I love to swim. Um, yeah. Swimming is very good. Um, just overall feel of being out in the warm, hot temperatures. You can wear less clothes. That's the best benefit. Hell, I'd wear nothing if I could get away with it all year round uh, where the temperatures are nice. But I don't know if the neighbors would think on that, but I know I sure would enjoy it. Um, so anyways, um, that's summer is why that's my favorite time of year because all the nice weather. Um, question three is, what was your favorite restaurant to eat at and why? Um, I don't dine out like on a regular basis. It's just like when the need comes up or if I, you know, don't have something in the house and want to go eat, um, I'll go dine out. But however, I do try to choose um, locally owned and operated restaurants when I can. There's this one particular favorite I have, which is not too far from here. It's called Bob's Restaurant and Diner. Um, they're family owned and operated. They're a small, you know, family surviving in this big uh, corporate world. You walk in, it's, you know, it's a clean place. It's that old school diner look. They've got the chrome and stainless steel backdrop. They've got the chrome bar stools. They've got, you know, your little tables with the chrome edges around and black and white checkerboard floor. It's just, you know, it's like a throwback, but it's still... You know, it's got that nice feel. And they know most of their patrons by their first name. Um, I don't go there that often, so they don't really know me that way. But I see customers come in and they call them by their first name, ask them what's going on in their life, happy birthday to such and such. I mean, it's just great to see that kind of thing from the waiters and waitresses and even the owners. Um, they also have, you know, good food. You know, it's diner food. It's not anything fancy, but... You get all your pretty good basic things or desserts. They're very reasonable. And, you know, they're just, they're in this corporate world trying to make their spot, what they've had for years, um, to still exist. And I think we need to patron these um, family-owned and operated businesses more often. They um, are struggling to survive these days. So, uh, yeah, that's why I choose Bob's Restaurant and Diner as my favorite place to dine in. And... The experience there has always been good. They're always there for you. All right, so question four was, um, how long has it been since you've flown a kite? And do you miss it? That's kind of a random question. I never really thought about that. I would probably say maybe 10 years old was the last time I flew a kite. I know we used to get them for Easter every year. You could look forward to getting kite, getting those little wooden airplanes, um, you know, the chocolate rabbits, the malted eggs, and the, find the hard-boiled eggs and all that stuff in your Easter basket. And, yeah, you know, we would always hope that it was a nice day, that we couldn't wait to get outside and you know, get that kite up in the air. Um, it's pretty fun. You know, it brings back a lot of memories. And do I miss it? Um, I never thought about it, missing it. But, yeah, you know, it was a fun part of the childhood. So, um, hell, it might be fun to grab a kite later today and give it a whirl and see if I can get one up out in the field here. Uh, get some friends over, have a kite flying party or something. Uh, anyhow, uh, I think, yeah, I think it was a pretty good part of my childhood. So, uh yeah, it's been fun. All right, question uh, number five. Um, you do construction, so what is it like to do, and what are some of your memories of it? Um, yeah, I do construction, and I enjoy it. Um, right now, it's kind of the off-season, and I'm only doing it on the side. But um, memories of it are, um, you know, just doing even things around the home, or even for my parents, or... Uh, other people that you know, I know. 
um, even just helping them out on their own small projects or if I take on the project on my own you know, as a job, just seeing the end result of you know something you've accomplished or you help do just gives you that um, overall satisfaction that you know geez I did this with my hands and the tools and um, that's just a pretty good feeling to see your accomplishments and to see you know someone else's results that um, like what you've done for them. I guess my most memorable experience would be from um, several years back there was a, a devastating house fire um, in our community and the family of the, the mother and father and their two kids lost everything and thank God there was no lives lost but they lost their home everything in it there was nothing was able to be saved um, they had very little insurance and they were struggling you know the regular average American person the working class um, they really couldn't afford with even the insurance payment, they couldn't afford to build a new home or buy a new home. Um, they were struggling you know, to pay rent somewhere because the rent prices were outrageous. And so the community got together and just started to help them out and they started this Raise the House project. And through you know several organizations, they were able to get vendors, um, contractors and stuff to supply almost all the materials um, and most all the labor was volunteer. So that's where I came in. Um, I was glad to help out my services and anything they needed me to do. Um, we were there for them to get this job done. So the best part of that was after this project was done, seeing the results that they had, um, that was heart touching that you could see that these people like couldn't believe that the community got together and actually did this for them. And you know, that's what families are all about and your neighbors, you take care of each other. We need to do more of that this day and age. I just hope someone will do something like that for me someday if I ever need it. I hope I don't need it, but you know, let's take care of each other. We're all one, okay? And so um, this is just part one of the interview from Jacob Lenhouse Tours America and stay tuned for part two. And bye, see y'all later.